to do the programming or configuring rather on the IDS panel you'll need a USB to serial converter but the IDS alarm system needs the IDS one so you'll have to buy this one from IDS now it's got a USB on the one side which just plugs into the laptop or computer now on the panel you've got to unplug if you have an SMS module you've got to unplug that and then the IDS serial connector goes in there the red is on the top and then on the older units you had to remove a jumper here but on the newer units you don't have to so I'm just going to leave that because this is a newer unit this happens to be the x64 panel which I'm now going to configure right in order to configure the x series uh, panel or actually any IDS panel you need to have the IDS Swift software now you need to install that and then the username is admin and the default password is admin right then you log in then it will ask you for the option of let me just move this then it will ask you for an option of new or open now you can create a new client you can just give it the names you'll have to choose the panel 805, 805S, X16, 64, 8, right? Then it will want the hardware version. And then it doesn't need the serial number, but it does need the installer code and download code. All right, so I've already done this. So now I'm going to find a old version, uh, old setup, and I'm just going to use those settings just to show you the installer code is four nines and the download code is four nines. The firmware version on this panel happens to be the latest, which is 2.6 at the moment. And then the connection, are you going to connect using an IDS modem or a direct connection? Now I'm using the direct connection, so I'm just checking that, right. So now the first thing you need to do is say connect. You might find that you'll have to go up and down the COM ports in order to get it to work. Like in my case, it works on COM port 7. You can change that on the my computer and you can just set your 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 I'll show you now how you do that. You can go here uh, a device manager and under COM ports I can see there is the U IDS USB download station and I can see it's COM7 so that's how I knew to use COM port 7 right now the most important thing here is I've already programmed or I've already set made settings on my alarm system so it's very important not to say send you must say receive because I don't I want to receive what's currently on the panel I don't want to write over any of the settings for example what I found in the in the uh, in the system is that if you send it writes over all the coding including the coding for the remote controls maybe you've got remote controls on your system it forgets them so that's why I, before I do any updating I first receive from the panel so it's just receiving now and what's a good idea to do is have a spreadsheet just listing all these zones so then you can actually um, see them and you can say, all right, zone 14, 15, 16. So then ha you have it in your memory or you could write it down. Now, in my case, I'm not going to write it down. I'm using the Excel spreadsheet as I've just shown you. Right, now it has received all the current uh, configuration of the system. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to use this zone one okay it doesn't give you much uh, space to write here so this will be main bed sliding door all right then it's set to partition one yes stay profile yes enable zone bypass yes buzz zones okay that's fine so i'm now just needing to update zone 59 so i'm seeing here 59 it says tachex so i want to that zone is now activated yes it's already been put on partition one buzz profile that's fine um, now I'm going to say tactics 
Precious. Okay, because it's near the, the person who lives in the property, their name is Precious, and it's on. It's called. That's why I've written Techix Precious. I could also just change this, and I could say Techix Car. Yeah, that's a better name because it's the Techix by the car port. Right. Okay, and that's it. So now I'll go on to the next zone, which says zone 60, and that's now going to be VX roof. So that is a, a Optex VX sensor, and I've just called it VX roof. So I know it's the Optex, and I know where it is. It's sitting on the roof. Right, partition one, check that box. Buzz profile, yes, all correct. Now I move on to the next zone. Now I've installed, you can also change the zone type. Now I've already done that, so it's zone four. Now I'm coming here and I'm going to say VX main gate 3. I've installed a smoke detector. Alright, and that's it. So these are the things you can do here. You can set outputs. You can set the outputs on the zone expanders. For example, you can pulse them, you can set user codes here, you can do the comms, you can do the partitions, you can in do your keypads, uh, all the keypad settings, for example, if you wanted to sleep, um, you can set certain keypads to certain zones, you can change the system settings, trouble display global settings so this is a very good place to make these settings right once you have finished your coding you now need to send the coding to the panel so I'll say send and it will override but remember it will only override the items which you have changed so it won't forget all the other settings all right so it takes a few seconds to provide the the coding and then it will ask you if you want to update the time which it's always a good idea to do that Right, now it has conf it has finished configuring. I can see that it's got the new coding. Yes, and now it's time to disconnect. Now when I disconnect, it just says, do I want to synchronize the time with the computer's time? And I've done that. Now all you have to do is unplug it from the main uh, alarm panel, which you do, you unplug it. And if you're using the uh, SMS module, don't forget to plug that back in. And that's it. That's how you code the IDS um, alarm panels. Thanks for watching.